Uh, okay, what we're looking at here is the Ainsley circuit flashing a light bulb. And uh, what I hope to be able to convince you is that the MOSFET is on when the corresponding scope trace goes low. That's running off of the function generator at a very low frequency and uh, you can see that's the duty cycle there. Let's see if I can change that. You can see that I can vary the duty cycle there. And you can also see that if I crank the duty cycle down, the bulb goes off. If I start with a very short duty cycle, the bulb flashes like that. And then as I get to a longer and longer duty cycle, the bulb stays on, and it's only off for short periods of time. And then, full on duty cycle, it's on all the way. Okay, so, and there's the corresponding scope trace. And there's that very short duty cycle again. And you can see that that bottom trace goes low when the bulb flashes. Alright. Okay. So now I'm going to turn the gate drive down a little bit. Look at that, even with the gate all the way down, there's still enough signal from the function generator to fire off that MOSFET at that slow speed. But now we'll go ahead and go up back up to our operating frequency, which is 2.4 kilohertz. Okay. Uh, that's close enough. Okay, and of course we got to change our time base here. And uh, that varies the duty cycle. Yeah. All right. So at this frequency, at a very short duty cycle, the bulb doesn't come on because I've got the drive turned way down. But if I turn the drive up, now you can see that the bulb is glowing dimly. And on this oscilloscope, you can see that the load trace goes down on that short duty cycle driven by the function generator, making the load glow dimly. Okay, now I'm going to turn the duty cycle on the function generator up. Right up here, I'm going to do this, making it wider. This is what happens to the trace. The bottom trace is the load trace, point A. You can see that the pulse goes down as the duty cycle increases. That down pulse increases, and if you look at the light, the light gets brighter. As the width of the on pulse increases from barely on, 3.6 on, going up, 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 okay, so this down part here, high, low, high, the low part corresponds to when the bulb is lit, which means that's when the MOSFET is on, all right? Now I'm going to turn this all the way up. So now we'll go back to a short duty cycle from the function generator, like that. 
very short. Input current across the resistor, output pulse to the load. You can see that the light is kind of dim. Let me get it even dimmer. I'll turn this down. Dim, dim, dim. See how dim that light is? Now, this bottom trace here on this oscilloscope, this bottom trace is coming from the 555 timer, which is not yet switched into the circuit. So I'm going to set the frequency and the duty cycle so that the function generator trace looks just like the 555 trace. Okay, so we got the same inverted duty cycle, remember. And to prove to you that it's inverted, I'm going to switch it in right now. Bing. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Why is this happening? Well, it's happening because the 555 timer is producing an inverted duty cycle. Now, here's the duty cycle control. I'm going to vary it through its full range. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a slight dimming of the bulb as I take this thing through its full range of duty cycles. It goes from very long on to a little bit less long on, but it still never even approaches 50% duty cycle. This, func this 555 timer from the Ainsley circuit is causing the MOSFET to turn on most of the time, not off. And there is further proof for you that that is what is happening. By the way, I still do have the resistive inductive load hooked up. I've just put this light bulb across it in parallel. Okay. So, with it running off the function generator now, the bulb's nice and dim, and I will go up here to the duty cycle, and I will vary the duty cycle again from very short on to very long on, and you can see that the bulb comes up and the trace looks just like it did or approximately like it did with the 555. Now the 555 is introducing more noise and injecting even more power into the circuit because it's, uh, it leaks and undoubtedly it did in the Ainsley circuit if this was really what she used. Okay, so 555 timer, and by the way, the load temperature really goes up when it's running on the 555. Uh, it doesn't go up nearly as much when it's running on the function generator, but it does climb. Okay, but the MOSFET gets really hot when it's running on the 555. Alright, back to the function generator, and back to the Ainsley 3.7% duty cycle and there's that dim, dim bulb there. Okay, thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, you can see that I've installed a little test fixture there and a switch so that I can switch the thing from no resistor to a fast uh, uh, MUR1100E super fast diode or the standard 4007 diode that Ainsley was using and that uh, really doesn't make much difference. I've swept frequencies with my sweep function generator and I've swept duty cycles and I've looked at the high uh, frequency ring down and uh, just doesn't make much difference does make a visible difference in the high frequency ring down, but uh, it's really hard to see. Okay, thanks for watching.